In the previous video, we looked at Niels Bohr and how he discovered these things. These are emission spectra of different elements. And what he really wondered when he looked at these is why do they look different from this? This is a continuous spectrum. And this is what you see when you use a spectroscope to look at light that comes from the sun. So when you look at white light from the sun, you see all the colors. And Bohr wondered, well, why then if I look at light from specific elements when I burn them, do they look different? They only got specific bands. Uh, and Bohr thought it had something to do with the way the electrons were arranged around the nucleus of the atom. So he came up with a theory, and this is what he came up with. Okay, so we're gonna take a look here. So Bohr's main idea was that uh, electrons they could only have fixed amounts of energy. So they couldn't just have any amount of energy that they wanted. They had to only have specific amounts. And he called these fixed specific amounts of energy, he called them energy levels. And he showed the different fixed specific amounts of energy that electrons could have as rings around a nucleus, or what he called energy levels. And he represented this using uh, a letter like this N, he used the word the letter N to show which energy level you were talking about. This was N equal to one, this first ring. And that was the closest to the nucleus that the electron could be. It couldn't have any less energy than that. And then he showed N equal to two was the next amount of energy it could have. And N equal to three would be a ring further out and so on. And that was his idea that electrons could only have these specific amounts of energy. His idea was also that electrons spend most of their time in the lowest available energy level. So they can't just be anywhere they want out here. They spend most of their time as close as possible to the nucleus. So for hydrogen, hydrogen only has one electron. Uh, most of the time, hydrogen's electron would be here, as you can see right here, just in the first energy level, as close as possible to the nucleus. That's where it would spend most of its time. And this is what he referred to as the ground state. This is where the electron is in its lowest available amount, ground state. So this is the lowest available amount of energy that this electron can have. Can't have any less than this, the ground state. Okay, now, the board proposed that energy could be transferred to the electron by heating. So let's have a look here. Say we've got this electron. This is our electron, and we're going to just draw a little box here. And this box is going to represent to us the amount of energy that this electron has. So you see here, I'm drawing down the bottom, and I'm shading in this tiny little part. The reason why it's so small is because the electron's in the ground state. It doesn't have much energy. So this is the ground state electron. So we're right underneath, ground state. Bohr's idea was that, well, actually, you can make, you can give the electron more energy. So you can transfer energy to this electron. And when you do, well, the electron hasn't actually changed. It still looks the same. It's still the same shape, the same size. But what you have done is, if we draw that box again, you've added more energy in here. So now the same electron has more energy. And he decided that he would call this the excited state. This is an excited electron. In other words, it's an electron that has gained energy. It's got more energy than it did in the ground state. How could this energy be transferred? Well, there were a couple of ways. The main ways were by heating. So this is what he did. He placed them into a flame and the flame gave heat to the atoms. And when the heat was transferred to the electrons, they became excited. You could also use electricity to do this. Electricity would also supply enough energy for the electrons to become excited. Okay, uh, and what he then, how he showed these electrons was that he showed that they moved to a higher energy level. So he would then show that they had jumped out here, if you like, or they had jumped to a higher energy level. That's how he showed it. Now Bohr realized that this step would only happen if the energy that was being transferred to the electron corresponded exactly to the energy difference between these two energy levels. And that's a bit of a mouthful, but what does that really mean? Well, that means if the electron was here, and it absorbed an amount of energy that would get it not just here, but a little bit past there, just as far as here. Well, that 
is not on any energy level. So if I was to draw a third energy level, it would be out here. This here, where we this amount of energy got it to, is not on any energy level. So Bohr proposed that this would not happen. Okay, so this here, this transition, this would not happen. Uh, so if an amount of energy came that would put that electron and make it go there, it just wouldn't absorb that energy. It will only absorb the energy if it's the right amount of energy to move it from here to here or from here to here. If it was going to go here, then that would work. But if it was going to go here, then that would not work. Okay, so it would only absorb the energy if it was the exact amount of energy to get it to the next energy level, if you like. Okay, and this is why Bohr thought that electrons can only have fixed energy values. They can only have specific amounts of energy. They can't have anything in between. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up a bit because I've made a bit of a mess there. So using the rubber, I'm just gonna get rid of some of that stuff and we're gonna get rid of all of this. Okay, and there we go. Uh, so remember that he said that the electron would move to a higher energy level. So this here is shown us the excited electron. Now, Paul realized, though, that these excited electrons would be unstable. They can't stay there forever. OK, eventually they're going to want to return back to their starting position. Because remember what we said, electrons spend most of their time in their ground state. OK, so they can't stay out here forever. Eventually they will return. And uh, so when they do so, so here, let's say this is an excited electron over here. Obviously, at some point, they're unstable. I'm going to say that the un excited electrons are unstable. And at some point, they will return back to their ground state. And when they do, well, where does the energy go that they were storing? The energy is transferred out as light. So this is emitted light. It's called emitted light because it's given out. So let's do that, a diagram of that again. What would that actually look like? Well, here, if we say that this was the electron in the excited state, it's got a lot of energy, it's storing a lot of energy, and it's unstable. So eventually it returns to the ground state where it has far less energy. Well, that energy has to go somewhere because energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. So that energy has to go somewhere where does it go? This time that energy is released. Okay. Now, how does that energy get released? That energy gets released in the form of light. Okay, in the form of light. So the extra energy that the electrons were holding is emitted as light. The energy emitted, though, would be proportional to the drop in energy of the electron. OK, so however much energy this amount is that took that it took to get up there, it will then emit back out that same amount of energy. Each electron transition, so each electron moving between energy levels produces a line on the spectrum. So if we go back to the spectrum again, where are they? They're up here. OK, each of these lines represents an, an amount of light given out by an electron. Why are they different colors? Well, these are different electrons moving between different energy levels, okay? So say this is the N equal to two energy level, okay? And let's just say, here's the N equal to three. And this is the N equal to four. Well, if an electron falls from the n equal to four to n equal to two energy level, that might correspond to a green line. That amount of energy is green, is, is a green frequency of energy. Uh, if it goes between n equal to three and it falls to n equal to two, this might represent a red line on the spectrum. So because there's different energy transitions and electrons can move between different energy levels, that's why we can have different uh, we can have different colors on the spectrum. All right. 
Uh, now, because different atoms have different amounts of electrons, then you can get loads of different transitions going on. And that's why each element has its own unique spectrum. So no element has the exact same spectrum because no element has the exact same arrangement of electrons. So if you've got different arrangements of electrons, different electrons jump to different energy levels when they get excited. And then when they fall back down, they give out light that has a, a different frequency. And we see that as different colors. All right, so let's just clarify what is a, an energy level. So you see it here written in red. This was what Bohr's definition of an energy level is. What is an energy level? It's the fixed energy value that any electron can have. Fixed energy value that electrons can have. Now my students know that if it's written in red, then you have to put that in your dictionary. So I want you to pause the video, stick that in your dictionary now. Okay. And uh, then what we're going to do is we are going to do some questions on this. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to do this first one. Uh, this is basically uh, uh, this um next few questions as you can see from 194 to 201 we're building up uh, the explanation of Bohr's theory now this comes up all the time on exams it's really important it asks you to outline Bohr's theory so what you'd be doing is you'd be given this kind of uh, explanation all together but as you see I have it broken down into piece by piece for you so what I want you to do is I want you to finish these sentences. Now I'm going to model for you how you should do the first one and hopefully you can take it from there. So let's just have a look. In their ground state, electrons are in. Where are they? Okay, so in a ground state, where are electrons? Well, I already told you, electrons are in where at the lowest available energy level. So they're in that, the ring that's closest as possible to the nucleus. So they're in the lowest available energy level. Okay, so what I want you guys to do now is I want you to pause the video and try and complete the rest of these down as far as 201. So do that now, please. All right, so we're going to go through that in class the next day, the rest of that. So uh, make sure that you have done that. Let's read the sentence below. It says, in the above sentences, you have outlined Bohr's theory about the uh, electrons in the atom. This is a very important theory. It appears very regularly on the leaving circuit exam. So again, make sure you've had a go at that. We will fix it the next day. And that's going to be your explanation of what we call Bohr's theory. Okay, so this is Bohr's theory. All right, it's time to do some other questions now. Okay, so I'm going to get you guys to complete. 202 down to 213. Do that now, and then we will have a chat about the answers the next day. All right, so pause the video, do that now, and we'll chat the next day. All right, see you.